And I got to live out my dream. I'm, I'm, I was excited. I still have hits in me left, though. The problem with Deion Sanders being so electrifying is that sometimes people don't realize just how revolutionary he actually was. Let's face it, it's commonly accepted that he's the greatest cornerback in NFL history. But because everyone accepts his dominance during his 14 year career, huge accomplishments can get glossed over. You don't even know about some of his most mind blowing feats. Deion Sanders is the single greatest shutdown corner ever, and no one will ever surpass him. And for anyone to argument against that, you're gonna see why you're wrong. This is the gridiron. where prime time reigned supreme. Dion was born on August 9th, 1967 in Fort Myers, Florida. Growing up in a low-income household with his mother, Connie Sanders, and his stepfather, Willie Knight, Dion learned early on to rely on his natural athleticism and competitive spirit to overcome adversity. In his hometown of Fort Myers, Dion attended North Fort Myers High School. He excelled in multiple sports, including football, basketball, and baseball. His exceptional speed, agility, and ball handling skills earned him All-State honors in football and basketball basketball. After high school, Dion received a scholarship to play at Florida State University. At FSU, he played college football and also college baseball. During his time at Florida State University, Dion Sanders made a name for himself as a star athlete in football, baseball, and eventually track. Now in football, Dion was something else. He grabbed 14 interceptions during his college years, scoring four touchdowns with them, which is still a record at Florida State University today. But it wasn't just football where Dion shined. He was a key player on the baseball team too. He stole an impressive 38 bases. He knocked in 35 runs and he hit four home runs. On October 19, 1985, during a game against Tulsa, Deion intercepted a pass thrown by Steve Gage at the goal line early in the fourth quarter and he then raced for a school record 100 yard interception touchdown return. Setting his school record and leaving everyone in, in attendance in awe. And now check this out because this was a monumental day. It was on May 16th. Dion played in a baseball tournament. The first game was against Southern Southern Miss at Sarge Fry Field. He then, after the game was over, he smoothly transitioned to the track. At 7.05 p.m., Dion, with no prior track experience, he put on a track jersey and sprinted onto Wings Baskin track. After completing his leg of the 400 meter relay, he astounded everyone by casually admitting, I never ran track before. Now, despite his inexperience, Dion's speed and agility were undeniable, clocking in a 10.3 seconds time for his 100 meter leg. He then hustled back to the baseball tournament championship game at 7.30 p.m. and that just showed a star was in the making. His ability to do all that in one day, run track, and play in a baseball tournament. The 1989 NFL combine marked another chapter in the legendary career of Deion Sanders, adding to his mystique both on and off the field. Now legend has it that Deion arrived at the NFL combine in style, stepping out in a stretch limo ready to showcase his unmatched speed. But what really truly set Dion apart on that day of the combine was his unconventional approach. He did not even stretch and he blazed through the 40 yard dash leaving everyone in awe. Dion later said in, in his interviews afterwards, I didn't stretch because I never seen a cheetah stretch before chasing his prey. I didn't believe I stretched, you know why? Because I never seen a cheetah stretch before he go get his prey. And after his lightning fast performance at the NFL combine, in typical prime time fashion, he wasted no time. He grabbed his bags, conducted a few more interviews, and continued on his path to greatness. In the world of the NFL, few players have left a mark as indelible as Deion Sanders, better known as prime time. Deion's larger than life persona was evident even before he stepped onto an NFL field. During the pre-draft interviews, he famously told the Detroit Lions organization when they were interviewing him and thinking about drafting him, he told the Lions, listen, I'm going to ask for so much money, y'all going to have to put me on layaway. I was kind of scared. I thought Detroit was going to take me. I would ask for so much money that I had to put me on layaway. <laughs> on layaway, uh-huh. No baseball's leverage there, huh? No. And he was telling them that because deep down, he did not want to go to Detroit. So, you know, being a showman, showman that he was, he put that out in the media and also told Detroit Lions to their face. And it was actually in Atlanta where Dion truly found his home. He was selected fifth overall by the Atlanta Falcons in the 1989 NFL draft. 
and he wasted no time at all making his mark on this. In Dion's debut game with the Falcons, Dion took the second punt return of his career, 68 yards to the house, igniting the birth of prime time in Atlanta, Georgia. Throughout his rookie season, Dion showcases versatility and his playmaking ability. He had five interceptions, 39 tackles, and two forced fumbles, and over 1,000 return yards. He totally captivated audiences and immediately became must-see TV on a national scale. Dion rookie season with the Atlanta Falcons was just the beginning of a story in a field. His impact on the game transcended statistics, forever cementing him as one of the greatest to ever grace the gridiron. Thousands of Atlanta Falcons fans were devastated. Dion went to the San Francisco 49ers, who at the time were a division rival to the Atlanta Falcons. There were many Falcon players upset about Dion leaving also, namely star wide receiver Andre Risen, where Risen publicly clashed with Dion and the media, exchanging heated words leading up to their highly anticipated matchup. Everyone else to get off the field so we could just go at it one on one. No, I never said anything derogatory towards Dion. You know, and if he has a personal vendetta against me or a problem with me, the hell with him. Right. You know, and if he want to go one on one, we can go one on one all game. On October 16, 1994, early in the second quarter of the game, emotions boiled over as Ryzen confronted Dion on the field. What started as a heated exchange quickly escalated into a full blown altercation with punches thrown and both players locked in a brawl. Now, later on, in the second quarter of this game, the Falcons had the ball. Quarterback Jeff George dropped back from the 49ers 12 yard line. He threw an out route to Andre Rosen, and Dion jumped the route and he intercepted the football and raced down the sideline, all the while taunting the Atlanta Falcons bench and high stepping for a 93 yard touchdown. The Falcons eventually lost the game 42 3. After the game, Dion gave a very animated post-game interview where he proclaimed loudly and proudly to anybody who would listen, the Georgia Dome is my house. I built this, and it's always going to be my house. I got one thing to say. This is my house. Woo! I built this, and this is my house. I don't care if I'm with the Falcons or not. This is my house, and this will always be my house. Let's about 30 years later, Dion and Andre Risen did an interview together and they talked about the fight. They both agreed that Risen was upset that Dion left the Falcons and he didn't tell Andre Risen that he was leaving. Was my boy was mad that I left. Yeah, hurt. That was my brother. I was hurt. And I didn't mad. say nothing because I didn't know how to tell him I'm out. Yeah. And it hurt. It, it hurt him and, and I know it did. So he said some things and I was mad. That my dog, because he know what would hurt me. Dion also stated the Falcons never offered him another contract. But they never offered me a deal. No, they didn't. The 49ers with Dion won the Super Bowl that season, and Dion had a monumental season. Winning Defensive Player of the Year, first team all pro, pro bowler, and he finished third in the MVP voting, all the while playing cornerback. Dion Sanders wasn't just a football player, he was a game changer capable of turning the tides for any team lucky enough to have him. After a very brief stint with the San Francisco 49ers, Dion made a monumental move to the Dallas Cowboys, signing a multi-million dollar contract that would alter the course of NFL history. Dion's arrival in Dallas was none short of transformative. With his unmatched talent and unparalleled skill, he propelled the Cowboys to a Super Bowl victory in 1995, just like he did for the 49ers in 1994, officially solidifying his status as a two-time champion with two different teams in just two years. During his five-year tenure with the Cowboys, Dion emerged as the best cornerback in the league and one of the most dominant players in the entire NFL. After playing for Dallas, Dion played for the Washington Redskins and later the Baltimore Ravens. Dion retired from the NFL for good after the 2005 season. He retired as one of the greatest and most influential players in NFL history and also probably the most known two-sport athlete ever. As we conclude this video journey through Dion Sanders' remarkable career. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so make sure to leave a like, comment, and also do subscribe. Thank you for joining us on this member ride through the life of Dion Prime Time Sanders. And until next time, peace out.